Good morning, everybody, and welcome. First of all, I want to say thank you for taking the time today to join me on this fun and exciting conversation we're going to be talking about today, vulnerability management. Now, I don't know about you, but hopefully you find VM just a little bit of fun. And I know we have lots of challenges on it as well. Today, what we're going to be talking about is a vulnerability management maturity model and a self-assessment tool that we've created for it to help actually go through and figure out where you're at with this maturity model. So I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this cover slide, so let's just get right into the information. What we're going to be covering off here today, it's I'll give you a brief info of who I am in case you haven't heard of me in the past. Uh, we're going to do a brief recap on the vulnerability management maturity model. Again, in case you haven't seen that one, it's make sure everybody at least knew, had the resources and a brief understanding about what that is. We're going to go into the self-assessment tool as well, talk about the functionality features it has, and we're also going to do a bit of a demonstration on it just to show you how this tool works. I'm going to give you links in regards to where the tool is at, where you're going to be able to get it, wrap up and take any questions you have. So if you do have questions for the webcast today, if you can use the Q&A feature, you won't be able to leverage the chat itself, but um, across your menu bar here in the Zoom, you should see the Q&A. Click on that and put your question into there. And then at the end, what I'll do is I'll come back and take a look at all the questions. We'll be able to answer anything that you have. So that's the roadmap for today. We'll see if we take the whole hour or not, but let's get right into this. So who am I? Jonathan Risto. That's my name. I currently work in the government. I am the uh, senior architect or the solutions architect or project architect or whatever, leading the technical team, architecture design and implementation for a network consolidation project that we have running. So looking at how we can collapse things down and surprise, surprise, cloud's one of the options we might be looking at. Done a lot of things in my career in the past 23 years, 24, 25, oh my goodness, I'm getting old. Um, yeah, everything from um, vulnerability management, cyber automation research work. I've played the whack-a-mole game for numerous years, losing the evenings and weekends because of bad guys doing incident response, forensics investigations. But yeah, played that game as well, done um, uh, project management, uh, service development, implementation, customer systems engineer, across a wide thing and platform. So lots of different things I've dealt with over my career from networking through to focusing on cybersecurity and uh, those aspects for the past 15 years. Also work with uh, SANS Technology Institute over at SANS.edu. I've been on the faculty research committee there for the past three years, helping students go through with the research program that they have, um, completing their white papers, doing their presentations, et cetera. And I've also joined in now as an adjunct professor, helping out with one of the classes that we have over there at SANS Technology Institute. So if you haven't looked over there, feel free to do that. I've been SANS, I'm a SANS certified instructor. I've been teaching with SANS for a long time over 13 years now, kind of crazy. Dealt with a wide variety of courses from um, the critical controls, done, uh, taught the pen testing classes, uh, 560 and 580, incident response class with 504, taught some of the forensics for a while when I was actively doing that. But for the past few years, I've been focusing on management 516, which I'm the co-author of, which is building and leading vulnerability management programs. I've been putting all my time, effort, and energy into doing that work. So that's who I am, where I sit in the world, et cetera. But you're not here to hear about that, so let's get rid of this. So the SANS Vulnerability Management Maturity Model. I've got a link here for you on the screen. You can get over to it. It's a short and a half from the domain we own, mgt516.com slash VMMM, Vulnerability Management Maturity Model. But what it is, we created this in 2020. Because we are constantly, and everybody wants to know, how mature is my program? How am I? What am I doing? How, like, how can I advance? All those kind of questions. So David and myself, we created the, uh, the Vulnerability Management Maturity Model and released it in 2020. It follows that CMMI type five level um, format, in essence, across the 12 focus areas that we have that spans the entire PIAC model. Now, holy Toledo, what am I talking about here? So what you'll see, if you pull up the, if you load it up or have seen the vulnerability management maturity model, that link will actually take you to the key metrics poster and the VMMMs on page two. 
reason it's on page two, it's actually the most important thing on the poster, but we needed the space to make it as big as possible. So that's why we put it on the back. We took the space out from the front in order to handle things there on the key metrics. But on page two of that is where you will see the vulnerability management maturity model. Now, this thing called PIAC, it's something we use in part of our Management 516 class. It's covering all the different components that we need as part of a, a comprehensive vulnerability management program. So that is prepare, identify, analyze, communicate, and treatment. So inside the maturity model itself, we go across those five areas of the PIAC model, but we've gone into a bit more granularity. So we've broken it up into 12 areas, 12 focus areas across the PIAC model itself. And for each one of those, what you have is a maturity level of one to five that can help you out to figure out where you're at. As an example, with our policies and standards, I don't have many of them, but wait, you're at maturity level one. Congratulations. If you've created policies and standards that are based on industry best practices, you've forcefully gone through and chosen those policies and standards, you're at a level three. Level two, just stepping back there briefly, is if you've actually done some stuff, uh, it's only because of incidents or a bit reactionary, but you at least have some of the policies and standards in place. So as an example, you can see how we can step through it. Moving through to level five and policies and standards, and I'm going by memory here, so I might not get everything covered off in that. It is if you're actually having feedback loops included that feed into your training that's done yearly for people, people notified, and we're tracking the deviations and um, exceptions and when policies and standards aren't actually in compliance with, feeding that back in and reporting on it, doing that in automated fashion would take you all the way up to a level five. And so we have these across all 12 of the focus areas that we look at inside the maturity model. The problem is, how do I figure out where I am? Where am I inside the maturity model? Every single class that we've had since uh, before releasing this tool that we're going to talk about today and a few months ago, everybody wants to, how can I assess myself? How can I make sure that I'm really following and actually at level two or level three, as opposed to, this is just my best guess myself. So what we did, I went to did some work. I did some work on this last year, actually, reached out to a few people online through LinkedIn, and we were just trying to figure out how can I actually generate something to help me out here to create this self-assessment tool, which is what we're talking about next. I released this actually in April of this year, down when I was in Orlando teaching at SANS 2023, when we taught the class, released it and talked about it in live down there with the students. Also put together a blog posting last month about it. But what it really is, is a series of questions and a method that we can go through answering yes or no to questions. And then at the end of it, it'll help me understand where my maturity is across all the different focus areas that we have inside the maturity model. Now, I cannot take credit for all of this work. Had a lot of some help that came in on this to help writing the questions for this out of Deborah Barnes and uh, Felitas Boston III. So I want to say thank you to them for helping out as well for this self-assessment tool, getting and drafting some of the questions. So if you can find them online on LinkedIn, feel free to follow them. They post a lot of cool stuff as well. But they were willing to help out and they helped draft some of the questions that we have. Now, really, what does this drive for us? What does this do? What we're going to have here is I've created a tool and I'll pull it up here in a minute. But as I said, what it does is it goes through and after answering a series of questions, it's going to populate for you in the spreadsheet. This is what your maturity is. It's like, cool. Now, I am the first to admit this is anything but perfect. This is at least an attempt to try and move us forward here to give us something we can work with. And I am by all means open to suggestions, feedback, changes people want to require or put forward as part of this. Now, at the end, I'll show you where you can get access to some of this information. And I actually have it posted in a couple spots. I've given you a link to just the one on a, a server that we have here with SANS. Another one, you can actually find it on my GitHub repository as well. So that's Jonathan Risto. But we'll talk about both of those coming up later. But you just want to know, what is this tool? What is this magical thing that he's been talking about? So instead of me just talking about it, 
let's just actually pull it up on the screen here, show you what the heck this thing is. So you should now be seeing on your screen our nice copy of the tool. It's out here on my shared. And what this is, it's an Excel spreadsheet. Now, for all of us in our love of Excel spreadsheets, yes, we still have them. Um, and hopefully we're not managing all of our vulnerabilities via Excel spreadsheet. But there are people that are still doing that. So regardless, created the questions for you inside an Excel spreadsheet. And we'll just step through what the tool is here and how you can access and what you can take a look at. I'll give you a link for where this is afterwards after I show you a little bit of the flavor here on the tool. So this, what it is, you can see down at the bottom, I have three tabs available. And on the first tab, this is showing us all the focus areas that we have in the vulnerability management maturity model. So you can see the policies and standards, contextual information, automated identification. Oh my goodness, manual identification and external identification. Are we getting reports from the outside through a bug bounty program? Or prioritization, root cause analysis, metrics and reporting. You can see all the focus areas, but they line up exactly with what's in the maturity model. And you can see I have the maturity level printed out there for you across levels one through five. And to start with, you're 100% in level one. Why? Because that's where you're going to be if you have nothing put in place. You're all at level one. That's where you are in each component of your program. So this is the summary slide. We're going to, or the summary page tab inside the spreadsheet. We're going to come back to that in a minute. But if we go to the second tab, what this is, this is the questions things I was talking to you about. It's like, oh my goodness, questions. Yes, we set it up so it can be a yes or no answer. In all honesty, I give you an extra option in here. And I apologize, that doesn't open up that wide on the screen with the pull down, even though my font is bigger. But what we have is a pull down menu, yes, no, or unknown. So you, you don't have to leave it just to select an option. It's like, I don't actually have the answer. And what this sheet, when it's doing its calculations, actually will take an unknown as an answer of no. So I can't say it's affirmative, so it treats it as a negative. Now, all you have to do to go through and complete this is take a look at the question and answer with the pull down menu. So that first one, how has the organization established policies and standards in response to negative security events or incidents? Is that how you set things up? No, we didn't do that. Or yeah, actually, that's how we are. That's the type of things we've dealt with. Oh, now let's go take a look at that main sheet, that first tab over here. Oh, my goodness. You can see there's some changes on the first line. What we've done is we've actually still showing you your 100% level one because that's where you are. Everyone will always, it'll just build out to be 100% across all the levels. But you can span multiple levels as well. Here is an example, it says you're 33% done level two. Now let's see, I don't know the answer to this one. Let's say our policy is based on recognized fragrance. I don't know, I just started the job last week. I have no clue where they ended up creating these policies from. So I'm gonna choose unknown. Are employees made aware of the policies? Well, they're posted on the corporate website. Does that mean they're made aware? Hmm, I don't know about that either yet. So let's, I'm just choosing some answers here just to give examples of how you can end up with multiple options in here. Have we carefully selected the policies? Yeah, of course we have. We definitely have carefully selected our policy. So I'm going to choose a yes there just as an example because it's going to help me out and show some of the things that we can see on that summary sheet in a second. And this is what you end up doing. And you can see these 12 questions that we have here in this first part of the spreadsheet help us understand exactly what it is we're doing. And they're all related to policies and standards. So I'm just going to go choose a few answers here just so we can see how it populates out. So are we reviewing them periodically? God, no, we don't do that at all. We don't. We published them. They were approved, went through the management committee. Nobody ever looks at them anymore. That's how we're doing it in my organization, I'll say. So that's what we choose. There's training on these. Are they encouraged to training at least annually? Uh, part of my performance management plan, they have to sign off they did it. So let's say it's a yes. Um, do we have, do we track adherence? I don't track any adherence. Are deviations from policy? Well, when I find out about the deviations, I choose them. So I'll say yes there, just as an example. Uh, training on security requirements, mandatory for all employees. 
and were provided regularly. No, I don't do that. I, I, my, my, I'm just not there yet in my fictitious organization, or actually I'll do this with Zenzi Zensec, my company itself. Our automated controls, oh no, I have no automated controls. The only controls automated I have are blocking the websites in my or in my house for my kids not to go to them. Yeah, I'm the meanest dad in the world. I block you too. Um, sometimes. It's a random thing around here sometimes. Um, I don't know if we actually are doing proactive alerting to voluntary about violations. And let's just say yes over here. Are they updated or in feedback from the training and automated control? Let's just put a yes in there just to show some of the variety. Now, you can see I've gone through and answered these first series of questions. There's 12 of them related to the policies. Now, if you go back over to the maturity level assessment, oh my goodness, I'm all over the map. But you can see that I've got part of the controls put in place or part of the requirements to help me with level two. Same level three, I'm up to 67%. Level four, I'm at 33 and level five. Let's go back and just see something here. I'm gonna do a small change. Instead of saying unknown on these ones, let's say that yes, where we adopted these from recognized frameworks and employees were made aware. Now I can see what I did, a small change in the system. It says I'm 100% done level two and I'm most of the way through level three. And I've got a couple things that could help me all in level four and five. But you can see every time an answer is changed, it's going to impact the score that we have over here in the self-assessment tool. Now, where would you say in this example that I've got here on the screen, where would you argue you're at inside your company? Because you're going to end up with things like this if you go through and do your own self-assessment. Now, with that in place, hmm. You're definitely 100% done level two and you're most of the way through level three and even got some four and five. I'd probably argue or I could argue the point that, yeah, we're probably at a level three value from our maturity perspective. We're not quite 100% done all the components there, but we've got even some stuff that's more advanced than four and five. So overall, I let's just argue we're at a level three. If you want to be very rigid about it, you're only at a level two, partway through level three. Depends how you want to look at it. But you can be, um, it's not any of the self-assessments that we go through here. They're not going to be perfect. And they are somewhat subjective. To some extent, is are we all the way done, not done, yes, no, unsure? It's based on our view. So it's meant as a guidance for you is what we want to try and accomplish from this. So here, that's why I said you could probably argue level three. So that's how, and what the self-assessment tool, I'll step, oops, apologize. Don't do two fingers on the screen on your Mac, Jonathan. Back to the VMM questions, just to show you how it's broken up as well. You can see under the policies and standards, there's highlighting going on. The first three questions are blank, are, have a white background, then we go into green, white, and green stepping across. Now, for those of you that are really queen, keen and have paid attention to this, or maybe played with the tool a little bit already, that's actually breaking up across the different levels. And these questions have been directly taken from the vulnerability management maturity model because it states there's certain requirements at each of the levels. So we derived questions from each of the levels that you could answer yes and no to, to help us out. So the first three questions relate to level two, questions four through six that are then highlighted out equate to level three, seven, eight, nine are for level four, 10, 11, 12 in this case are related to our level five. And you'll see that as you step through all of the questions. Sometimes there are three, and in some cases there are four. Here you can see an example on the screen for level five of automated identification. What we have, there's actually four questions to answer associated with that one. So if we choose one, let's just pick on one of them at this moment and choose it as a yes. If we flip back over to the maturity model, you'll see I got 25% score on there. All we are doing is taking where you've answered yes, putting it out here in the summary sheet at the front. There's a lookup that's happening inside there to change the percentage values for you. And it's a shading that's happening as well from the green perspective for you for each of the maturity levels. That So you can see, as I said, the breakup, at least for the different levels, has been done with the banding inside the tool as well. Now, you're probably wondering, what the heck is that third tab that he's got open? 
There's a third tab on the spreadsheet he hasn't talked about it yet. Don't worry about it. There's nothing useful over there. All it is, all I've done on here is I just put off on another sheet, the pull down values. It's for just for populating on the other side. Yes, no one, you know, no, all that is. The main part of the spreadsheet where the questions are on the second tab, that is what you need to spend the time and step through, actually go through and do the assessment. I'm just scrolling down here and I apologize for this. There's a bit of a, there's a few questions. But you can see, we go to line 157. So we have a little over 150 questions that you're going to have to answer for yourself inside the organization. You can do it collectively as a group, or at least get people to validate it after you've gone through and put in the answers, however you choose to approach it. But there's a few more than 150 questions that you have to answer in order to complete the self-assessment. So it's not something that you can do in like, well, maybe you can do it in five minutes. But for most people, this is probably going to have to take a chunk of time. Even stepping through that probably is going to be at least an hour. And if you're doing it in a group and need to find information, you might actually take a significant amount of time to be able to identify Am I actually doing this? We have to go and talk to people. I don't have the answer to this. I don't know what's going on in this part of the program because what's happening in config management? I'm not the owner of config management, nor am I dealing with patch management necessarily, or what am I doing related to change management? All of those are sections of the vulnerability management maturity model that we have, and that we're going to have to understand what's going on. So just like in vulnerability management, where we have to reach out to large parts of the organization to figure out what's going on and to get work done, self-assessment, we're probably going to have to reach out to those same partners in order to try and answer the questions as best we can. Now, the goal here, as I said, we're just trying to make it, and I'm scrolling up to the top again inside the spreadsheet, so I apologize for that a little bit. But it is, it's the goal here, as we said at the start, trying to make it easier for people to go, this is where we sit inside the maturity model. And what you will end up with, I'll flip back to the maturity screen slide, just the summary of them. You're just like we see here at the top screen or the top line, sorry, on this screen, where we have 100% level one, 100% level two, and then we have a varying percentages across other levels you're going to see you're going to have that as you go through the assessment. I honestly expect you're going to have some levels, you'll be 100%, level one, maybe level two. After that, there might be little chunks that you don't have. So you could be at the 67 or 75% for levels three, four, or five. There might be some components that you aren't currently doing. Now, what does that mean? Hmm it's gonna help you understand some of the components, at least relating back to the maturity model itself, that you can actually end up looking at, adopting or bringing into the organization to help advance your maturity level. It's one of the benefits of the maturity model itself. It kind of gives you a little bit of a roadmap around that. Oh, you can actually bring forward and continue to advance the different components of your program. Is it, comprehensive for all aspects, cover everything with all the questions I'm asking? No. Like I said, we've got 150 questions here, but trying to get a good representative sample of what it is inside the organization. So that's how the self-assessment tool works. Now, just to give you a little bit more information on that, if you really wanted to, there's nothing impacting you from being able to add other questions into this yourself. Pardon me. I'd argue if you think something is missing from the, the tool itself, or there really should be a question asking this, please let me know. I have, like I said, I cannot say that this is a hundred percent robust, perfect, et cetera. No, I am quite frankly, don't think many things are, but if you have something you think should be changed on here, uh, please let me know and more than happy to take that into consideration how we can adjust it. So if you want, I'm going to give you some contact details later in the presentation. Feel free to reach out for me on that. Not a problem. You can do it through LinkedIn. My email address I'll give you as well. If you do go onto the GitHub, 
and you're into the repository, open it as an issue on there. You will find the self-assessment tool inside my GitHub repository as well. I'll show you where can you get this, though. That's what probably people are wondering about. So you can start to play with this. Let's go back to the presentation, if it will pull up on my screen for me. Thank you. Now, well, before I give you the link for it, are there any restrictions on using the self-assessment tool? No. Well, yes and no. You can, anyone can use this inside your organization any number of times that you want. Um, share it in amongst your teams inside that organization. Only restriction I put on this, not to be used in, from a commercial perspective. So I don't want, as an example, all the vendors maybe taking these series of questions and then adopting it. That's not permitted right now. If there is a vendor that wants to do that, get in touch with me and we will discuss how that can be dealt with. Free to download, share the link, do what you want. Use it as many times as you want. Share it with your coworkers, post it internally, get the um, information working collaborative, however you want to do it. Not a problem at all. The information's available to you out there. That's the only restriction you have. Don't want it uh, put out inside commercial tools. Um, other than that, use it, help understand where your organization's at. Now, where can you get this tool? I've got two links. You saw the first one already. Uh, MGT516.com slash VMMM. That's where you can get to the maturity model, the poster that's linking over to the SANS website. Now the self-assessment tool. How do you get over to that? Well, MGT516.com slash VMMM dash SAT. What that is going to open up for you, and I'm just going to pull them up here on the screen, put it over. Here, if you went to the vmmm.mgt516.com uh, slash vmmm, you're going to get to this website on SANS. You can click on the download and get to the poster. Now, if you go to the mgt516.com slash vmmm dash SAT, it's apparently a typo. There you go. I love it when I make typos like that in my demos. I digress. Um, all I did was use a URL shortener that I have, as I said, on the domain. It'll link you over to this Ignite page. That's some of the stuff where we store from the vulnerability management perspective for the class and other information. It's actually, I got a lot of info in here for you. One, the one specifically you're going to want to deal with is this maturity assessment VMMM. That Excel spreadsheet is what we were just looking at. But I've got a couple other things that are in that folder you're able to use as well. You can see, oh my goodness. Key metrics, VMM, V5, there's that poster that I just gave you the other link for. You actually can get the old version of the poster as well, because there's just with some extra context information that was off to the sides, extra stuff, so kept that in there as well. But I've also even got stuff for related to the maturity model itself and the different levels. So those are available for you in there. Feel free to download access to that information. It is not a problem. But the one you want specifically for the self-assessment tool is VM Maturity Assessment VMMM Excel Spreadsheet. If you click on it, you can see it's going to pop this up. And oh my goodness, click on the little download if you want. If you clicked on it or highlight to the side, hit the checkbox, hit the download. Then what you're going to get is it'll download to your system. You'll have that XLSX spreadsheet for Excel. Load it up. You'll be able to do exactly the type of information and things that I was just conducting as part of the demo here. So that is where you can gain access to the files. I think Laura has already posted out for us inside the chat those links as well. I asked, yes, we can see those are all up there for us as well. Lots of information on those. So that's where you can get access to the information. As I also said, if you want, go to the my GitHub. So github.com slash Jonathan Risto. You'll be able to see the self-assessment there. So however you wish to give some feedback, please feel free to do so. Now, where does that leave us? Hmm. Here's at least the slide just showing you. Yeah, maturity assessment, vmmm.xlss. Just for those that are maybe looking at it afterwards that did not have and see the live all the live demo and stuff, here is at least what you should be seeing. That's the file that you want to grab for it. Now, where does this leave us? As I said, feedback. This can be improved, and I would welcome any and all suggestions you have for how to continue to improve this. All of us, we have challenges with vulnerability management. Been dealing with VM and doing scanning and actively working in the vulnerability management space for way too many years, quite frankly. 
as we all are, we have massive problems still trying to even get the backlog churned through. There are organizations with millions of vulnerabilities. It's what a VM is not easy for us. And we don't have all the answers ourselves. But as I said, I'm more than happy to help take suggestions, comments, feedback people have from it to how we can continue to improve what we have here with the self-assessment tool to make it better, more robust. So you can reach out to me if you want on LinkedIn, send me a DM in there, not a problem. I'm on Twitter as well, Jonathan Risto, all one word, just like my GitHub. And if you want, that's my email address over at Zenzi Zensec, which is my consulting company that I have. So please feel free to reach out if you do have suggestions. I will respond back and talk with people about what we want to try and do, how we could do the changes, and why that change is needed in there. And if it makes sense, we will adopt it. Uh, oh, do the change upload, not hard to do, and then we can release a new version of it. So as I said, more than happy to take any of that feedback, comment, questions people have. Now, little thing here just in regards to vulnerability management. I'll remind people, if you do have questions, please feel free to use the Q&A feature inside Zoom. And while I'm waiting for some of those, just something here on the screen with regards to vulnerability management and general cybersecurity leadership stuff. At SANS, we have the curriculum of the cybersecurity leadership. And we have these things called the uh, cybersecurity triads, really. And one's a transformational cybersecurity leader. You can see on the left-hand side in the green, which is management 512, 514, and 521. But over on the right in the blue, that's where I really like to focus. Uh, you can see that's the operational cybersecurity executive. And the vulnerability management class that I'm the co-author on, that's where we actually sit. We're over there with the 20 critical, I'm sorry. I will never stop saying 20 critical controls, even though it is now 18. Um, 566 with the critical controls from CIS, as well as the Security Operations Center with Management 551. So we fit over there as part of the Operational Cybersecurity Executive component. And if you want, you can see the link at the bottom talking more about the triads, how that can help you continue to advance your career, move it forward, how these all tie together to move forward to help our organizations and us become better leaders as we continue to develop and advance inside our careers themselves. That's all I wanted to say about the, uh, one more thing on the triads. One thing really cool, if you're like the coins, they actually have coins for these. If you complete all three courses in each of the triad, there's actually a coin you're going to get. My God, they're so cool. I've got to take another class in order to try and get the Transformation of Science Security Leadership one. They won't even just give me one. Ah, oh, I've got to take one more class in my spare time. But I digress. Anyways, that is what we have and what we mean here from the, uh, the triads itself. There's a link you can go over, read a blog post on it and just see what's happening. So what I wanna take now are questions. I know we've got a couple of questions that are posted up here right now. So I'm just gonna pop open the question and answer screen. Bear with me as I look down and read these. And uh-oh, I almost think I should have brought over my reading glasses. All right, first question we have in here. We've got a bunch that are already answered. Oh my goodness, gotta love it. Ah, but let's go into the ones that are still open here. Yeah, will you be going over CVSS V4? I am not going to be going over CVSS V4 this week in this webcast. Something that will be coming out, we are going to uh, have to talk more to Laura on this, working with to get the information related to CVSS so we can get a bit of a summary for the community. And for those that maybe aren't aware or... Um, I know I, I've started some conversation yesterday on CVSS before. There is a new version of CVSS being put forward. Um, right now, we're currently on version 3.1. It's actually information is posted out there today. I'm not going to share all the links on that. If you follow me on LinkedIn, connect up that way. You're going to see some posts I put out yesterday and get you over to all the specs. Or do a Google search for CVSS v4. You'll get into the information. But there's opening up the request for comments until the end of July for the changes they're proposing for V4, and it's supposed to be coming live by the end of the year. So that's from a CVSS V4 perspective. I expect there will be some information. Um, uh, my plan is at least is to try and at least get a blog post posted out about V4, as well as we could do a webinar just talking about some of the new features, functionality of what's being proposed, just to help spread the information. So that's a quick, quick question answer on V4. 
Now, what we have here, the next question I have, I've been involuntarily managed about uh, six years now. Would SANS 516 be valuable to me? Is it more folks new to vulnerability management? I honestly think it will be valuable to anybody inside vulnerability management. What we take a look at inside 516 is a comprehensive vulnerability management program. So looking at all of the components that we are going to need to have in the organization, how they all play nice together, looking at metrics, how we deal with treatment, uh, getting that dealt with inside the organization. So yes, someone new in vulnerability management, definitely helpful. But I've had people in the course as well that have said they had valuable um, takeaways from it that have been doing VM for the 10, 15 years. And it also really is not targeted at, let's argue the operators. It's not only targeted at managers. It's not targeted at CISOs. I've had all levels of people inside the or, uh, organization and even our remediation partners taking the cause to help get a better understanding. And I personally think they, and have been told that they all have found value in it. So I think any level in the organization, as well as any level of experience that you have, Management 516 will help you out. I'm biased. I will give you that, but there should be nuggets in there for every level and every level of experience of people that you're going to find information that will be useful for you. So hopefully that one answered that out. <laughs> How do you keep up with the ever-changing uh, threat landscape? Oh my goodness, gotta love that one. <sighs> it's hard. How do we know what is going on inside the environments? How do we know which vulnerability is going to help us out? Not directly tied to a maturity self-assessment, but yeah, staying on top of threat intel, threat information. To have and be able to scale it up in the organization, we're going to have to actually have some form of automation helping out. It can't just be Jonathan Risto sitting there reading the blogs and newspaper articles and sharing it around inside the company by email. That doesn't scale well to help us with what's happening, both from new vulnerabilities as well as what are the threat actors currently doing about it. Now, there are some things that can help us out. One, we've got CTI platforms. There's tons that are available. And this is a massive growing market space, I find, and constantly changing. So actually having some dedicated platforms are an option to help you out. Now as well, though, there are other tools that can give you a bit of focus down that, while maybe not quite as robust, it can at least help you understand what's really going on in some of the threat. One as an example would be like CIS's uh, known exploited vulnerability, the KEV. Why do I say that's a good thing to pay attention to? Well, CIS's mandate is to help secure, protect, and uh, uh, give the directives what the US government has to do. If they've got on their known exploited vulnerability list, a vulnerability that has to be remediated, or the, sorry, they've mandated government to remediate, me and private industry, I think we should be looking at that. So as an example, they've added in the past week, I think there's been four vulnerabilities added on there. So even as the most, some of the basic things we can start taking a look at is Items like that. You can also uh, leverage things like EPSS, which is a scoring system to help you if you have no other form of threat intelligence, as they say in their documentation, it can actually help you. It's an exploit predicting scoring system is what EPSS is, helping you understand what's the likelihood of this vulnerability being exploited. So they have a method to calculate there. And even inside our existing tools, pick on the Rapid7s, Qualys, um, the Tenables of the world, they have information in there about threats. They have, is this exploitable or not? Is it active in the wild? So even leveraging some of the stuff that is basic and in our tools can help us keep it, manage and start doing some prioritization and segmentation on the changing threat landscape as well. But if you need the more robust and more comprehensive, you're going to need the multiple feeds coming into a CTI program and tooling inside the organization and then you'll have to figure out how I can leverage that fuse the data together with my vulnerability scanning data to actually do some more finer grained um, vulnerability prioritization. Long-winded answer as I tend to be on just about anything but hopefully that one answers off there. Now let's see here we did the just scrolling through from the top we did the CVSSB4 one what kind of uh, Relationship, vulnerability management, maturity model, and cybersecurity maturity framework. 
Ooh, that's a great question. Right now, I don't know there is a direct relationship between the two with the cybersecurity maturity framework and the VMM. We worked on that independently and generated the vulnerability management maturity module a while ago. What I actually should do, maybe that's something we can work on, is actually see how this maps back and forth together and if we should be doing some more work to try and better align them, or at least so we're at least we have a direct mapping between one to the other. Because you know, some of us are mandated to follow certain frameworks, et cetera, that are out there. So can we get a better mapping? I think there's a pretty good mapping from my knowledge, but I haven't formally gone through and done the exact mapping of this item maps exactly over to this line. Or if you really want to go in extreme, does it map into NIST 853? No, I live in this 853 being in government or its variants. So regardless, but there hasn't been a formal mapping done from that to be able to do a direct and show you the direct relationship that this question directly aligns with this part in the cybersecurity maturity framework. Great question. And as I said, maybe that's something we should take a look at. If it's something you're interested in doing, reach out. We'll see what we can do to get this moving forward. All right. We've got another question. Two more in here I see at the moment. Um, pardon me, let me take a drink here. Those that have taken my glass, you'll recognize I always have the big monster cups of water and regularly drink from them. Uh, for an organization that has barely addressed their vulnerabilities, are there weights of priorities for the focus areas uh, that should be applied? I'd argue, if you're taking a look here, let me pull it back up on the screen, just some, uh, no, I don't have the, do I have the maturity model open? I don't see it quickly. Let's bring this up. It's a great question. Oh, that's, this is the older one, I clicked on the wrong one, but I'm gonna zoom in just to see something here. Uh, bear with me one second. I was trying to do something on the fly and it didn't like me. Let me grab the maturity poster, go back. I have the key metrics. Let's just, I'm going to download the poster just to pull it up because it'll be an easier way to display some of the information. So let me pull it up here on the screen. There we go. This, here we go. The metric, the key metrics poster that I was just talking to you about earlier. Here's the actual copy of it. Let me get rid of this sidebar. We don't care about page one. Metrics are kind of cool. Worked on this with AJ Yon. Uh, but yeah, some great information on the metric side. But what we want to look at is the maturity model. So I'm just going to zoom in here on the level one items and just have some of this um, zoomed in just so we can see a little bit of information. Now, as I said before, you can take a look at the maturity model poster itself. And as the example here on the screen, let's, uh, let's go back to the policies and standards because here I have it exactly on the screen. We've got undocumented state of change. So if we aren't new, have hardly been doing any addressing, you're probably a level one there. Now, what would I want to do to keep improving and advancing my program? Well, I don't necessarily want to start uh, with level two, only doing things that are based on negative impact or I've had incidents or a result of something that's come up for the organization, but start formulating and getting access and creating the standards, the policies, selecting them based on those best practices and recognized frameworks and then building in some of the feedback controls that you see in level three, as well as four and five. So looking at the maturity model can help you go, hey, what should I be doing here? How can I actually keep bringing things forward, advancing my organization? So here, defining the policies and standards, carefully selecting them, looking at some of the best practices out there would take you from level one, where we really don't have anything just started out, I can go to level three by carefully going through and defining what I'm going to need for how am I doing prioritization? What's happening for external reporting information? What is my schedule and how do we manage identification? Just three areas. Do I have a change management process? Config management. Do I have patch management processes put in place? So there's a large number of policies, programs, and uh, standards that we may have to create. What are we doing for remediation timeframes? But carefully choosing these and having them in place would help me continue to advance the program. And that information is purely what I've grabbed from the maturity model itself in each of the focus areas. So you could do across any of the focus areas, and it can help you identify what you might want to step forward with inside your program. So hopefully that answered your question, Patrick, there. But that's how I could leverage at least 
Um, the focus areas themselves, just in a quick five minute summary of how we could maybe advance the program by looking at the focus areas themselves. All right, next question we got is VMM, oops, just bounced up, uh, tied to controls like SOC2, PCI, CFS. Yes, the mapping would be great. Yeah, there's, like I said, there's not right now any mapping going over there. I would argue the VMM will directly tie into some of those, but we have not done a mapping over of that. So yeah, I agree. That'd be a great thing to take on and actually get done. So if someone's already done this and wants to share with the community, we can make sure that that can get out there. Or if it's something you're willing to take on, reach out. Let's see if we can get a group together and get some of this mappings done. Okay. Do we get a copy of the slides? Yes, there's going to be a copy of the slides are going to be available as part of the, um, um, you'll be able to grab them, I believe, off of the SANS website, at least is going to be inside the recording for this webcast itself. So you'll be able to step through and see them. And I think the link for the slides is also provided to you there. So that's what we've got on that one. Let's see, policy security, okay. BMM policy should be part of organization security policy or a separate policy? Oh boy. Now that's a great question. I think, pardon me one second. Hmm. Ah, gotta love the smell of smoke even inside the house. Um, but um, going back, I think inside a general security policy, the organization security policy, there's probably going to be some mention in regards to vulnerability management. We're going to be actively doing it, et cetera. But I think there needs to be some very vulnerability management specific details, definitions, and policies created to help the program. If you put the, uh, everything in the security program in there, pick on vulnerability management, how are you handling incident response? How are you dealing with uh, forensics investigations if you're doing that what do we do for controls for the all the different protections that we have inside the organization that main security policy gets used so I think there's going to be a high level policy that will touch on it that could be the organization security policy but then I think there's going to be some other documents that might get into details whether it's going to be a policy a standard a directive a workflow for it something to help define out or a combination of these I'd argue as an example, remediation information and how we do identification, what's mandated for us for, uh, as an example, we're using agents inside our environment. If agents are not available, assets need to have a categorization on them, pick on critical, um, uh, like mission critical, they're going to be high and low value assets, and then the scan policy for network-based scanning on those. Cloud assets, I have to be doing, like there's lots of different things that I don't think will make the main corporate security policy be anything except a 50 page book starting to include a lot of the details we're going to need so i think there's going to be sub policies that will feed in and help address the goals so not everything in there but i think vm in general should probably be part of the, the policy mentioning about it and then tying into other documents we're going to need is how i would think it'd be kind of a hierarchy of the security organization security policies like the overarching thing and then the other ones provide more guidance more details to let it be as focused as they need to be but also something that as I said it's not going to be a 50 page book for us to read just to go through one policy and then I have 643 things to comply with in order to make sure we're in compliance no we can say we're working the overall policy frameworks in place and maybe this component, this sub thing is not being done, but at least we can try and address it instead of this monolithic policy. My view on it, how I've seen it implemented inside some organizations as well. So hopefully that answered that question. All right, uh, question uh, in regards to the tool, case of a very large enterprise, quite immature capabilities in config asset change. How can we decide how much investment is worthwhile to improve the maturity of these capabilities for the purpose of vulnerability management? Oh boy. Now, could we spend the entire day talking about that one probably? Hmm. In a nutshell, there's probably going to have to be some, A, a cost-benefit analysis done, but really, what are you seeing as the pressure points, the pain points inside the organization where you maybe have some immature focus areas? Like you said, you, you picked on, you gave given there, what was it, change, asset, and config management, or change management? Yeah, config management and asset management, and probably inventory is a big issue as well for you. But yeah, it's going to look... 
I would argue something probably related to overall asset management inventory is probably going to be your higher priority item than say change management or config management only because unless until you know all the assets the software where they are actually installed configured and running in the organization it's going to be really hard to you to try and actually do other parts of the vulnerability management program but it's going to have to be a balance because you can't just ignore change management until you have asset inventory done and asset management because that can take years quite frankly to do so you're going to have to balance i would think between the different focus areas how, what can I do? What am I missing? Where do I see my roadmap to help me get where I need to be? I need to be able to do this. What are the steps? What can I then manage inside this year's budget or say put forward as part of the budget for next year with both from a funding perspective, but as well as the people and resources to operate this? Because we all know we have a whole lot of challenges getting the people in place to help us run the tools and keep the program going. So it's doing that analysis in essence across the parts of the program I need to, and maybe some of them I can advance faster than others because maybe it's going to be I need to bring in, let's say for asset management, and I'm just random picking numbers here, I need to bring in 10 new people in order to try and get this and have it all up and working. I can't get those 10 people. We don't have the funding. It's not going to be able to be approved to bring in those FTEs and get all the salary uh, dollars associated with that. So, but maybe with, let's uh, pick over on change management, we only need one person on top of to augment the program to the next step. So it's that kind of balance looking at what we can do inside the organization to advance all the areas. But, and you will find, I think, inside your programs as you're doing these assessments and looking at it, some areas are going to be more mature than others. So bringing them all up as needed. And so it's just that balance of how we can actually step and move it forward. I don't have a, a, a be all end all. This is the way to go because there's so many corporate and organizational specific factors that are going to come into play there in regards to which is going to be the best one to bring forward. So there, there is some corporate analysis that's going to have to be done to help you out there. So I apologize, I don't have the perfect answer for you, but that at least should help out some, I think. Without appropriate staffing, it's difficult to move to a higher maturity, potentially, yeah, but, oh, sorry, I'll, you know, I'll come back. Move to a higher maturity, people focusing on BM, it's difficult to, uh, yeah, specific metric for staffing maturity, is the maturity model, or is this out of the VMM scope? I don't think the um I don't think it's directly in all of the focus areas for understanding and making sure that we have the right training for all of the staff put in place. And I said potentially in there as well for some areas to move to higher maturity. So with that as we move forward in the maturity, we're also trying to get things more automated, getting, so in essence, the, the, the work to get to that point, we're trying to get it automated in the systems, there's automatic checks happening, or the metrics are being created automatically, fed out, created as part of the program. So there may be at some point to start off, we might need some people, but there may even be an ability to try and simplify our lives by getting to some of the automation capabilities that we need. But yeah, it's it's the staffing levels isn't been hasn't been itemized out for any of these that you're going to need two people to do this, three to do this. But yeah, it's it's a hard thing to deal with the analysis of that because there's going to be a lot of factors from your organization that are going to come into play there. But at least I think we're going to have to understand and have from our security team perspective that people at least have the right skills to manage the equipment, the tools and the processes that we've brought in place to deal with vulnerability management, as well as our remediation partners and the rest of the partners in the organization. If I don't have them having an understanding of how to use, let's pick on tool X, Y, Z, because that's where all the data is being formed. That's where we're generating all the metrics, the dashboards, et cetera. They don't know how to use it. It's not going to get used efficiently and effectively. So some basic training is needed for them. Or if we bring in something from an asset management perspective, understanding it's not just us and security. There's a whole broader part of the organization that needs the ability to understand and how to use this. So there's going to be a balance, I think, between the focused in-depth technical knowledge 
And then what do I need to be able to properly leverage this? And this can even go up to the executive suite. I have seen in uh, leveraged products where it's like, yeah, you could have the dashboards created for the leadership team, but at the same time, they could also go into the tools and create what they feel matters to them. So then even knowing that that is a capability, let alone, hey, some basic things, you want to run some ad hoc report on whatever, here's how you could do it. Information that may be helpful for them too. So it's there's going to be a balance for getting that training across the organization to understand how to leverage the components or even what is needed to be done as part of the broader vulnerability management program. We need you to bring this forward. We need you to remediate within our timeframes because this is how it impacts your area of the business. This is how it impacts the security risk for the, or the overall corporate risk. So getting even that basic information and um, understanding security vulnerability management awareness across the whole organization is helpful. So I kind of touched on a variety of things related to the training and the knowledge levels there, but hopefully that at least helped out for you as well with it's not directly in the VM, but it has to be part of the program or we're never going to truly succeed to move forward. And some of it can be automated for us to maybe not have needing people to do as much manual work as well as we continue to move up the maturity. So there's a little bit of a wrap up on that. Now I have writing coming up to the end of our time here for us inside the vulnerability management uh, webcast that we have for today. Glad that helped you out there. Um, so what we have is I want to say thank you to everybody here. Thank you to Laura for helping me manage and run through things today. Thank you all to everybody for taking the time in order to come to the webcast today. And if, as I said, if you have any suggestions, please feel free to reach out to me. Don't have that. But thank you again for attending, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I'll pass it back to you, Laura. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for sharing your expertise, Jonathan. If you want to share that slide that you have on when your upcoming classes are, uh, we would love to get that information out. If anyone is interested in taking 516 Building and Leading vulnerable different avenues on demand anytime and then a couple of Jonathan's upcoming classes are listed here as well and Jonathan's contact information feel free to reach out and connect with him and we hope to see you soon at another webcast or event yes thank you Laura I completely forgot about that so thanks again everybody and we hope to see you soon <laughs>